Welcome to Sista's Place Inspiration and Entertainment Show interviews with authors, celebs, and much more with hostesses Latrice Carter and Selena Haskins. Our special Mother's Day podcast. Today, today is an incredible special podcast as tomorrow is Mother's Day. This is a day that we take time to celebrate, remember, and pay tribute to our mothers. Our mothers are truly special women because they prepare us to become women and men that someday will have their own families. I am excited to bring this special podcast with some of the beautiful women of Sister's Place. Today, we have, of course, my co-host, Selena Haskins, Faith Berthy, and we're going to do a few shout outs to our fellow sisters who could not make it um, today. For Palara Henderson, Marcy Hill, Army Ward, and we'll send a special shout out to Kimberly um, Jasper, who was anticipated to join us, but um, unfortunately she is n- um, not um, on our call today, but we will shout her out as well. So besides hearing from us today, what our mothers mean to us and what nuggets of wisdom they gave us or what we remember about our mothers. We have a special music tribute by one of my favorite indie music artists, Shamia Crawford. The title of her song is called I Love You. It's a song that's perfect for this show as we dedicate the show to all the wonderful mothers smiling at us and down on us. We love you all with with all of our hearts. We thank you for being the strong and driven Black women who shaped us to the women that we are today. Selena. I'm sorry. We will get started with a shout out to our senior editor, Carmen Ward, and her mom, Toya Daniels. Ms. Daniels, Carmen would like for you to know that she would not trade you for the world. She says, when I think of my mother, I think of independence, grace, and strength. These are her best qualities that she has passed down to me. These traits can only be shown. And that is exactly what she has done throughout my entire life. She showed me to count on myself and rely on my own abilities. She showed me that treating others with kindness, even in adversity, takes a gracefulness that not everyone possesses. And that attitude has carried me through countless strenuous times. And it is through independence and grace that I have found my inner strength. For that, Mom, thank you. So we will have about 10 minutes um, to talk about two memorable moments about our mothers and share whatever famous sayings that stuck with us throughout our lives. Let us start with Faith Birthy, who brings you her two cents of wisdom in Sister's Place magazine. Faith Birthy, please share about your mom. Hello, 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 everybody. So Thanks. grateful and happy to be online with my sisters. I um, am very, very excited always to that I'm a part of Sisters Place Magazine. Big shout out to Latrice. Thank you so much for using my writing in your magazine. My mom, um, when I think about my mother, there are so many memorable moments that it took me a minute to come up with two that I'm going to use today. First, I'm going to start with her two famous sayings. You catch more flies with honey than vinegar. And she would also always tell me, kill them with kindness. I never understood what she meant by catching more flies because I thought, why would anybody want to catch flies? But actually, they were both saying the same thing. Treat people with kindness. Treat people the way you want to be treated. And I held on to that because it, it's, it's just been the background of my life. And I would watch my mother when she dealt with adversities, when she dealt with people who, um, for 
lack of a better way of putting it, just particularly, you know, didn't particularly care for her. My mother was a civil rights activist. She was also a politician here in New Orleans. So she met a lot of people who didn't particularly care for her. And I would always wonder why she never handled them the way they handled her. And she would always say, kill them with kindness. She never let them ruffle her feathers. She never let them get under her skin. And she always, to me, rose above the occasion. And I just thank her so much for that because she taught me to do the same thing. I tend to not let the things that um, people say and do bother me because I rather think that maybe they're just having a bad day. Maybe something's just not going right in their lives. Maybe they're just walking or are on a journey right now that I'm not able to understand. And I like to credit my mother for that because as I watched her growing up, she taught me several things. One, how to be a lady. Two, how to rise above adversity. Three, that I could do and be anything that I wanted to be in, in life, in the world. And four, to always remember that there's someone else going through a whole lot worse than whatever you're going through. Somebody else's problem is all, there's somebody else who may be having problems that are way greater than your problems. So give them, a, give them a little grace, give them a little slack. And I thank her for that because those were values that I was able to pass on to my own daughters. And as I watch them now maneuvering life, I see so much of my mother in them and they say they see so much of me in them. So it's a generational thing. And, and I'm very grateful to my mom for all the lessons she taught. My mother was a country girl and she would have so many different sayings that we, we didn't understand. But her core value was to always treat people good, to always be kind, to always be loving, and to always give people the benefit of the doubt. So I think that I'm going to, and I still use her sayings. I still say that to my daughters, kill them with kindness. And you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. And it took them a while to understand what it meant too. But now I think it's, you know, some of their core values as well. Some of the, I think they actually use those sayings too. So my poor daughters, they get to use my mother's country sayings that nobody, you know, have a clue what, what it means. So, yeah, my mother was a strong lady. She taught me to be strong and I'm very grateful to her for that. Awesome, beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Absolutely. Um, Thank you, Faith, on those beautiful, mem mem beautiful, memorable moments. Um, it's always a blessing to hear how our mothers have passed something down to us that we actually start using and sharing with our own children. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I like that saying about the, um, you can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. I really like yeah. that. I've heard it before, but... The way you explained what it actually means, I was like, oh, okay, well, now I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. like, who would want to catch flies, right? Uh, it, it, it basically, it's basically saying you can catch more people with a good attitude than a bad bad attitude. You know, more right. people are willing to, to want to engage with you if you have a good attitude as opposed to having a bad attitude. So the same thing, you know, kill them with kindness. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. Kill them with kindness. Absolutely. I like that. Okay. That's that southern thing. You know, that is that those are my roots. Thing, girl. <laughs> those are my roots. My look, my grandparents are are, are New Orleans and, and in Baton Rouge. So oh, wow. my, yeah, my dad's side is New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and my mom's side is Mississippi. <laughs> Yeah, you you all the way southern girl. Yes, that's that southern look, got that Creole over there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love um, our southern roots as well. Yes, I do. Wouldn't so trade cool. it. Wouldn't so trade cool. it. So our next shout out is from our senior writer for Sisters Place, Marcy Hill, and for her mom, Verlene Hill. She says Mom, you are my everything. You made something out of nothing with your sacrifice, creativity, and ingenu ingenuity. I can't say this today. Ingenuity. <laughs> I appreciate and admire you for who you are, what you have done, and what you do. And I love, 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 love you for it all. Happy Mother's Day. Mrs. Berlin Hill. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's that is so it beautiful. Is. This is going to be an emotional day, y'all. <laughs> it's already an emotional day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to definitely be an emotional day because, you know, hey, it's Mother's Day and we're celebrating them, Prep, you know, whether they're living or have gone on to glory, we're celebrating them and paying tribute to them. Um, Alina, oh, that's okay. So... <laughs> Um, I'm sure if Kimberly were with us that she would want to shout out her mom as well. So to Kimberly Jasper's mom, on behalf of Sisters Place, we want to say a happy Mother's Day to you on behalf of your daughter, Kimberly Jasper. And um, we also want to read um, Hilara Henderson's Shout out to her mom. Now, Palera Henderson's sister is Sister's Place attorney and wealth expert, and her mom is Linda Henderson. And she says, Thank you, mom, for showing me the beauty and resiliency and sacrifice. Thank you for allowing me to see the hard work that hard work is worth the effort. Thank you for allowing me to be me, never dimming my light, and giving me unconditional love. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. I like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mothers are our true gems and they must be treasured because they are the gifts that the gifts that keep giving day after day. Value God's precious gifts called mom. I am honored to introduce my co-hostess, Selena Haskins, as she shares her memorable moments about her mom. Five years ago, I almost lost my mother due to an aneurysm. Um, when matters of life and death flash before your eyes, you just have to respond quickly. And that's what I had to do on that day when her doctor's office called and said, well, not her doctor's office, but when the hospital called and said, hey, we need to operate on your mom right now or she's going to die. So I didn't hesitate to tell them to start the process to save her life. And I did a Wonder Woman, a lick and a promise, put my clothes on, and I just rushed to the hospital. Um, they saved her life, but in many ways, although they physically saved my mom, I think that spiritually and emotionally, she saved me. Mm. Um, because after that happened, it slowed me down and helped me to smell the roses mm. and focus more on, you know, the important things in life. And also the things that brought me joy. Um, we have one life right now because tomorrow's not promised. And one of my mother's favorite sayings is don't put too much on your plate and stress yourself out because if we can wait till tomorrow, let it wait. I like that. Um, and she also taught me that there's a difference between being a woman and being a lady. Women, you see them everywhere. But a lady is distinguished by how she carries herself with self-respect, good speech, and her manner of dress. So my mom taught me that. And she also told me the importance of um, being patient. She's a very patient woman, hardworking, diligent, kind and giving. She's uh, very family oriented. And she's helped me to value my own family. Um, our fondest memories are whenever we cook together. Mm -mm -mm. I always learn how to prepare dishes with the right ingredients to make it taste better we and being from washington dc 
um, not far from Baltimore. We love our crabs. <laughs> we love blue crabs here. It's our favorite. And um, we enjoy eating them and sitting and watching TV, laughing, you know, talking about whatever's going on in the neighborhood or in the family. And I just love my mother, you know. The word no does not even exist in her vocabulary. I wish it did. Sometimes I find myself telling her, hey, mom, you're not a spring chicken now. <laughs> and we'll just laugh about it. But um, so, mom, like you say, every day is a mother's day because a woman's work is never finished. And I just want you to know that I love you very much. And thank you so much for all that you do. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. That is beautiful. <clears throat> Thank you, Selena, for those those amazing memories. For Thank me, you for me share. <laughs> oh, you are so welcome. You are so welcome. So you know, guys, for me, some of my memorable moments about my mom that I truly treasure was the first time she said, "I love you." I say that because my mother is a southern country girl from Kosciuszko, Mississippi and she come from a very large family and they didn't always you know she didn't grow up in a house where they walked around saying I love you so it wasn't something that she mimicked um but even though she didn't always say it but when she did you did a double take and it was like she knew she knew when you needed to hear those words from her it, it drew you into her closer, and those are the days you embrace more than any other day because she did not grow up in that type of household sharing feelings. Um, but she had to learn that she had to do that, do something different with her kids because we needed to hear those beautiful words. You know, because you go to your friend's house, you always hear their mamas tell them, I love you, baby. <laughs> They're going out the door, and you know, I'm like, my mama never said that to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a little envious. You know, you little and you like, my mama don't say that to me. Um, right. But it took for me to get much older to understand, you know, her her upbringing. You know, it yeah, just wasn't it just wasn't something that they did in their household. You you have to respect that. Um, but yeah. like I said, she knew how to show us how much she loved us when she sacrificed for herself to make sure my brother and sisters had what we needed. I have a lot of memorable moments, um, but there's a memor um, one of the memorable sayings that has stuck with me and makes me laugh every time I even think about it. Um, Cause I found myself telling this to my child <laughs> when she was in school. Um, my mother used to tell me that your mind off them boys and in them books. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 I laugh I about it. Mom, you said that at some point. <laughs> yeah, I laugh about it now because it's so funny how you end up saying that to your kids, especially your daughter. Right. You get your mind off them boys and get in them books. Um, because that that is more an asset you will possess over some boy's kiss or attention. And that's what my mother used to tell me. That's what my grandmother used to say. If you don't get your mind off them boys and get your mind back in on books, because I was the first, and I didn't understand it then, because I was my mother's first graduate from high school, her first to graduate from college. So I was that first, that first generation for our education. Too. So she pushed and she said she was hard. Yeah. But she saw that in me. Now, my dad's side, very educated. My mom's side isn't. So my mother was like, no, I, I want you to get that education. These boys, they're going to always be there. <laughs> your, your asset is your education, pretty much. And I love that. And, you know, but it's funny that I found myself telling that to my child. <laughs> to my daughter when she got of that age when she wanted to start dating and we had a rule you can't date till you're 16 i don't care i don't care how many of your friends is dating 
you're not allowed to date till you turn 16. And there was a reason for that because, you know, there was a level of maturity that I needed to see. So, and my, my mom taught me that. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful for that. And I love her dearly for that. She's she's relocated back to her southern roots, back down, down south to her hometown. I miss her much. I just wanted to tell her today, I love you. And her birthday is Mother's Day, too. So we have a double whammy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Happy Mother's Day and happy birthday um, to my mom. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Very sweet. Very hey, sweet. I think that um, I think that whole not saying I love you thing is a southern thing as well. Because you know my mother never did much either, but and it made me tell my children all the time. I mm-hmm. I every chance, every moment I got to say I love you, I would say it to them because. We didn't hear it, like, you know, growing up in our home either. I mean, it just wasn't, you know, you didn't, I mean, it, it, I guess it's being in a large family. I don't know what it was, but yeah. I mean, like you, I wanted, I, I wanted to hear it. And when she did say it, it meant a lot. So yeah. I made sure I, you know, I did just the opposite with my kids. And I admit every moment I got, I say, I love you. I love you. I'm, I wanted them to know I love, I love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah. you know? I say it every day to my daughter. Yeah, every day. It comes from that, not not hearing it growing up. Um, is everybody's mom alive? Is mine? Yes. Mine, okay. mine is. Well, I, yes. My mother has gone on home to be with the Lord. So um, I was just wondering about that. And I know Kimberly's mom is also um, going on to glory. So I know this weekend is kind of hard for um, for her as well. But I know she always says her mom, she can feel when her mom is smiling down on her. So I know um, she may have missed today's um, call, but um, I know it's hard, but just always remember um, the fun memories and her smile and her laughter. She's smiling at you and she's very proud of you. And we love you dearly, sis. Very much. And you too, Faith. Um, keep the faith, because I know that's what, that's probably something your mom would want you to do. <laughs> oh, I do. I mean, yes, yeah, you know, I mean, my mother's always with me. Sometimes I pass by the mirror and I'm like, who is that? Oh, it's my mom. I look exactly like her. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> See? There are times when I look exactly like her. You know, oh, wow. wow. And my daughters say that. They say, like, you know, sometimes I look in the mirror and I see you. So I don't know. We have those strong genes, I guess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Uh, I miss hey. my mother. Every Mother's Day, I miss her more. But I carry everything that she ever taught me, every moment we ever spent together, you know, with me everywhere I go. And, um, her life was not in vain. She made an impact on us and on the world. So I'm just grateful every day that I am her daughter, period. Amen. Oh, that's so sweet. It is, ain't it? That's, that's what you have to um, hold on to is the memories because those memories are what will keep you smiling. Um, absolutely. Now, I just want to say um, that we are, um, you know, how we're doing the shout outs. Um, a lot of, of, of the um, sisters are um, including a picture with a little note from their mom that we're posting on the website and across our social media. So you guys feel free to send me a picture of you and your mom and, uh, uh, you know, some little words that you want to less, less than 100 words. And we're putting it on a special section on the website for Mother's Day special um, for Mother's Day. And then we'll we'll, we'll um, put it out on all of our social media as well. Sounds great. No, oh, okay, okay. My mom gonna say, "I don't want my picture up." So, <laughs> <laughs> but look, just find a picture of your a, a old picture of you two. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a current. It can be an old picture. <laughs> and just send it. You just send it. <laughs> when she sees it, it'll be too late to say, "I don't want my picture up." <laughs> yep, yep. Cause I got mine for my mom. I'm like, oh, I got this one. She just got her hair done. It's so cute. I'm like, I'm gonna post this one. <laughs> See, <laughs> I think my wow. mother and I are a lot of like, and I and I hate taking pictures, and she did too. So you know, there's very few of her, but I I have one that I'm gonna send. Okay. I absolutely hate to, and my daughter owns a photography studio, so she's always taking pictures of me, and I just absolutely hate it. 
<laughs> See, that's how my mom is. She's like, no, don't put that up. When did we I take that? that? I like I tell, I tell her all the time. I say, I, I do not take. And she said, that's just not true. You take beautiful pictures, you know. I guess what she see and what I see are just two different things. But I hate taking pictures. <laughs> well, you got some beautiful pictures, Faith. The pictures yeah. you sent us. Yes, you got some beautiful pictures. <laughs> she did them all too. Every one of them you see. <laughs> That y'all love taking pictures of her mother. I'm serious. It's crazy. I say, what are you trying to do? Murmur me in your memory? I'm still here. <laughs> well, hey, she's building her book. She's building her book of for future generations. This is your I name. guess, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my wild child. Okay. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <clears throat> This was awesome, ladies. This is awesome. I know there are a lot of women out there listening and, you know, you're just having all these great thoughts right about now about your mom and, and all of the awesome things you wish you were on this, you know, panel saying, but you can still say them. Just say them to her. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's all, you know what, with us being in this quarantine right now, not quarantine, but stay at home. Um, that's, you know, I think it's also God's way of making us get closer to our family. You know, I agree. that's true. That's I agree. true. I agree too. You know, I um, agree. Talk to yeah. your mom. Talk to your family members. You know, tell you. You know, you you have to say those beautiful words. I love you. You just have to. Yeah, it, really it goes do. a long way. It it you know, some people think it doesn't doesn't mean anything but for a four-year-old or a five-year-old even that 14 year old that those three words are powerful because it boosts their self-esteem it boosts their confidence it means a lot because it's, it's good for your parents and your parents to tell you i love you then to have your daughters go searching for love in all the wrong places say that that's the yeah. truth right there that goes back to you'll keep your mind on out the boys in, in the books. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Latrice, your mom, maybe she wasn't as strict as mine because my mother told me I had to wait till I was 18. I said, 18? I said, Dad, I'd be going off the call in about it. Do you really think my hormones can wait that long? <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, my dad had that. his way. <laughs> <laughs> but she I think he really to my mom and wait that long. Eighteen. Woo. I bet I they waited. I bet your mother made them wait. Oh, oh, my yeah. mother, my, yeah, yeah, my mother did make her wait. Oh yeah, my mom and them did too because they couldn't leave home and had to be married. My grandfather said that they girls were not allowed to move um to move out until they were married. They had to be the only way to move out of my of my grandparents' house, they had to be married. So my mom and them got married. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, they got married. That's the only way they can move move out of my grandparents' house. They had to be married. Wow. The girls were not allowed to leave. The boys can, you know, boys have to be men. Yes, they leave home. But the girls, no. You stay home until somebody came and asked my grandfather for your hand in marriage, and you got married before you I, left the house. Wow, that's really that's not, not, I, 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 that's not a bad rule. It's no, not, it's not. You know, I mean, I know it's really, really old school, really old school, but it's not a bad rule. I don't, I don't. I don't remember anything like that being in our family, not even in my mother's family, but, you know, I bet if she had heard anything about it, she would have applied it to us. Absolutely. We were very, we were raised very sheltered by, by my mother. We mm -hmm. weren't allowed to, you know, go very far. I mean, you know, that apron string was really tight. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. She, you know, and um, so I'm pretty sure maybe, maybe she had heard that and just, hadn't said it but she was putting it into practice <laughs> <laughs> but you know you come to appreciate that later in life you oh, know, yes, I always felt like my mom yes, was please. like overly strict but then when I looked around me you know there were girls who you know were getting pregnant or dropping out of school right um yes. and guys too you know getting into trouble and 
all of those things. And then, you know, you look back on it and you say, you know what? I'm grateful that my mom was strict. You know, I'm glad that she did, you know, um, put her foot down with a lot of things, you know, because it, it helped me to um, become a better person and a better woman. I'm grateful for everything my mother ever did. Even the things that I, even the things that made me angry, I'm grateful. Absolutely. Up to my own devices, I would not have turned out to be the person I am today. And, and that's just a fact. She was very strict and her rules were her rules. It was her house. And I am grateful. I'm very grateful because, you know, I gave my children boundaries and made sure they um, understood that, you know, nothing in life is free. And you, you know, you have to earn, you have to earn basically everything in life. You have to earn respect. You have to earn love. You have to earn trust. You have to earn everything. So that was one of the, you know, biggest lessons she taught us, you know, nothing, nothing in life is free. Nobody's going to love you just because you're here. Nobody's going to, you know, support you just, you know, the world, uh, that was another great one. The world don't owe you anything. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, and I teach it. I was, you know, that's something I, I instilled in my girls and I still, you know, say it to them. The world don't owe you anything. You could wake up every day and the world, do, it, it doesn't owe you anything. And now what, it's what you make of it mm-hmm. that's going to determine, you know, your little corner of it. But the world mm-hmm. doesn't owe you anything. No, absolutely. Absolutely. There are a lot of little nuggets that we took. I took yeah, from my childhood. I mean, when you think about some of the things that our mothers taught us, I mean, where would any of us be had they not? Yep. You know? Yeah. I can't imagine. I'd probably be in a juvenile home or get in all <laughs> kinds of trouble. Well, and that, that was the next thing. As I, say, I see it every day. I see a lot of young women who didn't have the guidance or didn't have, you know, regular... Um, the regular guidance of a mother growing up and yeah. and you see that in several generations now you know and it's it's sad and it it's is. sad because they they just didn't have that the benefit of having someone to teach them you know how to be a lady to teach them how to be strong to teach them to stand up for themselves to teach them to to carry themselves you know in a, in a certain way and to respect them you know respect yourself and your body respect others you know a lot got away from um from our young ladies you know so I, i'm always grateful i'm always grateful absolutely it's the core values is to in today it's, that's, today's yeah. generation the core values are missing we were brought up with those core values yes. i'm grateful grateful and thankful for because you know it truly took takes a village in our neighborhood where i grew up that, you got a whooping from Madea, Big Mama yeah. next door. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, they didn't play, you know. No. But today, you know, people be ready to shoot you. Uh, you say something exactly. to their child. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and that's and the same part about I did it. Is something that... wrong. My mother knew about it before I got home. You know, See? I mean, cause yeah. I, I could start at one end of the subdivision, and by the time I made it to my to our home, she knew what I had done, and if I had if I'd done something I knew I had no business doing, I just made a point of you know just continuing to, to have fun because I knew when I got home I was get a whipping. So I was yeah. like, well, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this whip whipping worth it, you know. <laughs> that's funny, and you know that's what's missing today. Those community, there's a lack of community today. Yeah. You know? And, and anybody was allowed, and anybody was allowed to chastise you. You know, I mean, my right. in, in in our neighborhood, and our you know, in the subdivision where we live, everybody was allowed to chastise you, and you were not allowed to speak back to them, um, disrespect them. None of that was allowed. And you know, they could they could chastise you, and you had better take it, because if it got back to my parents, that. You know, Miss Jackie was chastising me and I cursed her. Or I told her to shut up or anything like that. Oh boy, I was in trouble. Oh yeah. And now see, it's, things have changed so much where it's like children have more rights than a parent. Oh and girl, I, yeah. I think that 
you know, that's a downfall to society today. And that probably make for another uh good podcast too, Latrice. Side yes. notes. <laughs> but um <laughs> but you know, uh, just to piggyback on what you're saying about how you appreciate your mom being uh strict on you or how well you both turned out. And me too. Um you know, there it is unfortunate that women in particular um, didn't, not every woman grew up, you know, with a mom. You right. Know, or they grew up differently. I remember when I was helping um, a nonprofit organization to teach writing workshops to women who were um, living in a halfway home. They were um, transitioning from prison back into society. Mm-hmm. And Many of those women did not grow up in the type of families that we grew up in. Correct. They didn't have their mom. They didn't have their dad. And so they never knew, you know, what it took or what it meant to be, as I mentioned earlier, a lady, you know, a lady. And um, so they got into all kinds of trouble because of it. But they were learning. And like Latrice was saying, how it takes a village to raise a child. It also takes a village to help those kind of women who didn't have a mom. Mm-hmm. You know, why Why not? Who says there's an age limit on mentoring another woman? There's no, no age limit on none. that. None. You know, we can always help one another. And that's one of the things that our mothers no yes, doubt ma- taught us. Yes, ma'am. You know? how we can help the next woman to become a lady, you know, instead of, you know, um, looking down on her, you know. You know, and just to piggyback a little bit on what you said about um, the generation of women, the the women you were working with who grew up without their mothers, Mm -hmm. there's another part to that is because, you know, they have daughters who are going to grow up without them or they have daughters and they have nothing to pass down to their daughters. So it's a cycle. Generational curse. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's generational curse, you know. And like you were saying, you know, there is no no age where you, you know, I mean, if I can mentor a, a, a woman, I don't, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me what age she is. You know, if I can, if she's willing and, and I can mentor her, I'm going to do that. Right. You know, I can help her in any way. I mean, I, I, I sit in my district and I see older women come in who are deathly afraid of their daughters. And they want us to arrest their daughters. And that just, that just saddens me so because I, I, can't, I couldn't even imagine my mother being afraid of me or me being someone who could make my mother afraid of me right. or, or my daughters being afraid, you know, or me being afraid of my daughters. That's just not something I can even imagine. And yet here's this elderly lady telling me that her daughter hit her or her daughter put her out or you know, can you arrest my daughter and get her out of my house? She moved in with her children. And this is everyday, this is everyday life. I see this. And it just always floors me. And it floors me because it it just, it was not my experience. Mm-hmm. But it is this lady's experience. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, that- really, it's really hard to see that. And to, to, to try to even understand, how could you hit your mother? How could you? you know, curse your mother. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I don't understand. I couldn't have, of course, my mother would never have allowed it. Right. But, you know, I always tell my daughters, you, you would, you know, you'll still be looking for your face, but that's, <laughs> what <I'm saying. laughs> that's what she used to say to me. She'd say, if you ever raise your hands to me, you will still be looking for them when you're 90 years old. <laughs> oh my, I thought that's right. You have to be that way. It was all about respect. Mhm. And you know that early. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know um those who disrespect their moms are going to reap what they're sowing. Oh yeah. And when your mother is called home to glory, you're going to wish you're going to wish you can take back those words. Um because you only get one mom and we need to treasure that mom while she's living. So when she is called home to glory, you'll be able to have those beautiful memories and not be that person who is miserable 
because of how you treated her while she was living. <clears throat> now you're miserable. Correct. So. Yeah. You definitely read what you saw. And you only get one mother. And, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because I've seen people, you know, live with so much regret after their moms passed away. And they done caused their mother all that heartache. And then it's just like, you know, well, you never had a chance to really show her what you were capable of as far as doing better for yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's sad when you lose a mom before she actually gets a chance to see how much you've changed. I remember when, um, right before uh, Rick James passed away, like after he came out of prison, rehabilitated or what have you, he said his mom had died, so she never really got a chance to see him, you know what I mean? Like, straighten himself out, so to speak. And I just use that as an example. And um, how people just waste time. Time is just so precious. You know, once it's gone, you can't get it back. Can't get it back. Can't get it back. And once they're gone. Exactly. So yes. I just try to, you know, appreciate my mom every day. Tell her. Now, speaking of the I love you, you guys were mentioning. Now my mom says that like every day. Like after her incident where she almost lost her life. She too had learned, you know, many gems from that, you know, to actually say, I love you. Mm -hmm. See, I, I saw her love and I came to appreciate it as I got older, but like you guys, I didn't hear it a lot either because that's just the generation that she too came from. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. But now yeah. every day, you know, I talk to her every day and before we hang up, that's what we say. I love you. I love you too. You know, and yeah, also tell my son that. <laughs> and my son's <laughs> he's he's approaching a preteen age. So he doesn't like to get all mushy as much. <laughs> but it's it's important to say that, you know, because I tell you, when my son was murdered and I started I started a nonprofit called Second Chance. And one of the things that I would hear was and, and the women I was dealing with were all women who lost children to murder. And one of the things I would hear over and over and over over was I didn't get to say I love you in my, before my child died. That's why it's so important to say I love you to people while they're here because when they're gone, it's too late. And that was, you know, that was like a recurring statement over and over. You know, the, the thing that bothered those mothers most of all was that they didn't get to say I love you. So it's, it's important to say I love you to your, to your mom and to, to, you know, to your loved ones, to your children, to, you know, my mother, you know, I knew my I knew my mother loved me, even though she didn't always say it. I knew she loved me, like the priest was saying. You know, often they they did it, and you know, you knew it by the things that they did and the way, you know, they. But when when it was necessary, I'd get that I loved you from her. You know, right. but I knew my mother loved me, and I knew because of her actions and because she occasionally said it. But I knew she loved me. But you know, imagine growing up and not being able to say. I know my mom loves me. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I know plenty of people like that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, and then, and to lose somebody, to lose someone before you have a chance to say, "I love you," that's hard. That's a hard one, and most people don't come back from that one. At least. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're almost at the end of our show, Selena. You want to? Um, next well we just want to let all our guests know and our listeners that again you can visit sister's place on social media tomorrow for a special picture and message from many of our ladies of sister's place uh, we will be sharing on social media and on our website a special post just for our moms because they are truly the gems of our lives yes Yes, yes. And from, from all of us at Sisters Place team, we just want to say happy Mother's Day from all of us at Sisters Place. Happy um, Mother's Day. Thank yes. you for being a great uh, guest on the show, Faith, and always contributing beautiful articles to Sisters Place magazine. 
Thank we you. appreciate you and all the gems you share about your mom. Oh, thanks for having me. I loved every moment of it. She's one of my favorite topics. <laughs> okay. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Selena, thank you for sharing with your mom, you and Faith. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. Um, as we close out the show, um, leave you with a perfect song for Mother's Day by Shamia Crawford. It's titled, I Love You. And until next time, please, please be blessed, stay safe, and stay healthy. Until next time, we will see you again on Sister's Place, Beautiful Women of Sister's Place. Stay blessed, y'all. Be blessed, ladies. Blessings. Take care. Have a beautiful weekend. All right, y'all. Things about me felt you never leave me Always stood by me, support